Hello and thank you for joining us on the first edition of Journalist Hangout this week. I'm Ayodili Uzubakun. Today on the program, President Buhari urges African leaders to unite to defeat terror as Army Falls insurgents move to overrun Dalori in Borno State. President Ramaphosa booed at Mugabe's funeral over xenophobic attacks sent envoy to seven African countries as external affairs, former external affairs minister urges Nigerians to drag South Africa before ICJ. And later on the show, Governor Kaede Fayemi urges Commissioner of Police to fish out killer policemen who shot at the Federal University of um, Technology student. That's a Federal University Oye Ekiti student. I'll be hanging out with Babajide Kolade Otitoju, Wale Adeoye, and Majid Jamil. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. Oh, let's begin on a celebration mode. It was a harvest of awards for TVC News at the 2019 edition of Nigeria Media Night Out Awards. First, it backed the TV Station of the Year Awards for the second time on the bounce. Also, Babajire Koladeo Titoju backed the Media Man of the Year Awards, while Journalist Hangout as a program won the most interactive program of the year. Let's share the story with you. After winning the 2018 Nigerian Media Merit Award and MMA TV Station of the Year, TVC News has continued to attract more recognitions due to various innovative steps it has brought to bear on news and programming. At the 2019 Nigeria Media Night Out Award, which is the 13th in its series, TVC News also won big. At the event in Lagos, TVC News beat other broadcast outfits to win the TV Station of the Year Award for the second year on the bounce. The winner is TVC Congratulations. Congrats. I call it a sweetener because it validates what happened last year. It validates the award that we won last year. We are the reigning television station of the year in Nigeria. So for this one to come, it validates it in a very special way. We have to keep churning out good programs. We have to ensure that at all times we are the first with the news. Because these are the things that will make sure that we retain our title. We cannot take our eyes off the ball at this stage. Uh, we can win this year and then next year we don't win. We must make a habit of winning. The committee decision and if they have not seen something very fantastic about TVC, they will not be honored at that award. I also advise them to put more effort in whatever they are doing. People are watching. This was followed by the Media Man of the Year Award, won by Babajide Kolade Otitoju. Identifying TVC as the winning uh, TV station, I think the organizers have come with the evidence of uh, doubt. Most of the time, our people always are happy to see Babajide discussing the issue of insecurity between the northwestern states. So I think by identifying TVC, I think this is the right thing in the right direction. The station's flagship program, Journalist Hangout, also won the most interactive program of the year, while Murphy Ujemba of Max FM emerged as the sports presenter of the year. Without the fans, there is no radio, basically. And you know, every time we wake up, we think about coming up with something new, something better, how to make you know, uh, the average Nigerian happy, basically. And that's what motivates motivate us to do what we do every other day. It was a night of recognition and entertainment, which also featured a lecture titled Nigerian Economy and Political Development, Finding the Missing Piece. Thank you so much. Yes, I have the awards here. I call it treble. Okay, the first one, TVC being the station of the year. And um, I saw Babajide yesterday, the nominees across the country, yes. the stations that were actually uh, nominated, so many, were, were so many stations, and I, 
I was a little bit um, agitated when it got to that particular moment. And when I saw our competitors, mm. so I knew that, look, it could turn out any way. But thank God, TVC emerged as the station of the year. Jide? We, we really have to give glory to God. Uh, it shows that so many people there appreciate what we are doing because this, uh, the organizers actually requested that people should vote and the people voted for us. So it's not uh, like oh, people just decided on their own to give us these awards. On their website, they asked Nigerians to vote, listing the nominees and then demanding that Nigerians should vote. So it means that it's a popular choice and it means that people appreciate what we are doing. And um, it is a challenge for us to do much more than we are even doing at this time. Whatever we are doing that pleases Nigerians, we should continue to do it. While you are Baba Jiri Kolade Otitoju got the overall media man of the year. Well, I'm not surprised. Uh, if you even go on the street and ask people, you know, you will, have, you will get the same feedback. I've traveled in recent times up to even my Duguri and you know, I was impressed about how people, ordinary people out there, talk about this program. It tells you that when you have a good program, there are people that are looking out at you. There are a lot of people that look out at your station as the source of their inspiration. So I'm really not surprised. It's a reward for hard work. It's a reward for commitment. It's a reward for um, accountability in terms of reporting public affairs. So I can only say congratulations to what he told you. And I know that this will also inspire you to do more. MJ, Thank you so much. TVC got the best interactive program of the year. That journalist hangout got the most interactive program of the year. It's, it's, it's quite um, evident in um, the way uh, journalist hangout is, is, is structured. And um, each time I travel, uh, everywhere I go, people see me, they want to greet me, they keep asking after Babajide and uh, uh, Ayo and other members of the journalists and hangout uh, 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 team. So it, it, it's something that gives one joy in that people actually recognize the fact that uh, this program is dishing out information, is all, I mean, it's an all, no holds bad uh, program. To the effect that you know, we've had instances where the vice president calls in on this program. It's not often times that you see leaders uh, uh, watching a program and they get so interested. Everywhere you go, 5 to 6 p.m., Monday to Friday, in most homes across the globe where you have Nigerians, this is the program they are watching. So I say kudos uh, to Babaji the minister himself, who has actually taken charge and by dishing out, I mean, giving good leadership and also to the back end guys there. And I think it's a very good yeah. thing. And I'm, 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 yes. I must say I'm very, I'm very, very proud to be a member of the JH team. Uh, I mean, like Ajide said there, the reward for hard work is more work. Okay. We have to keep winning. To Jide, is, 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 is not as if we don't have our critics. We have our critics. We have people that accuse us most of the time. Some of the time they criticize us. Sometimes yeah. they criticize us constructively, and sometimes mm -hmm. people will call us agents of PDP. I've been, we've been severally labeled as agents of PDP. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. some other ones will call us agents of <laughs> APC. <laughs> APC. <laughs> some people will even tell you that, ah, you are a carry member <laughs> of, uh, of APC. Because yeah. today, when you are speaking with, uh, with in favor of APC, tomorrow, yeah. when you, you seem to be speaking against them, you know, and we even have people that will go out of their way, out of sheer jealousy, yes. sheer hatred. Yeah, yes. That you know, people they call I, I don't know. They call us names. <laughs> yeah. Names, call us out. Yeah. But you see the joy, the joy that I feel about the negligible minority that tries to diminish us is that even on the platform that they use, mm. the majority will go there. And go and tell them that, look, we're happy with these people. They are not you can call them what you like. Mm. You are just an attention seeker. We mm. don't want to uh, give you the popularity mm. that you do not deserve. Mm -mm. So this is the thing. We just have to, we can't please everyone. Yeah. Yeah. The day you say something that pleases them, they will be happy. But mm. there are a few people, like my brother, Dino Ayekoto, 
he is a staunch APC man, a responsible party man, but he realizes that the job I do is different from his, that I have to speak to the people in authority. He gives me that regard that, yes, I know that this is where you are, but occasionally, at least, be, be <laughs> spare us now. Yeah, so I understand. Sometimes you want to remember those people and, and feel it the way they feel it, but everyone must respect the other person's peace. It is my duty to not praise journalists, I mean, praise politicians. It is my duty to tell them what is good that they need to do for our nation. So if I'm doing that, and you feel that one of your friends in politics is affected, then talk to that friend to give good governance, and the criticism will stop. The day we start praising uh, uh, politicians. politicians to high heavens. Mm. They will say we've been bribed. Oh, they've mm. been set to. Ah, so uh, that is a cash and we carry spent, program. We spent almost two years in um, in criticizing the former Senate president. That's mm. Abubakar al yeah. 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 As at the time that we turn back, we look at, look, he has beaten them to all their games in the last four yes, years. They attempt they say, to oh, mm. you know. No, they, 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 they said oh. <laughs> we are Saraki Spiro. And it was like, ah, are you kidding me? Have you seen episode that? <laughs> oh, it is fun to look back and, uh, and hear people say even nasty things about you. It means that you are doing something well. Yeah. You yeah, are absolutely. doing something well. Absolutely, absolutely. So we quickly take a break. When we come back, we'll talk more. Journalist Angat will return after this timeout. Please stay with us. All right, the cat and mouse, mouse race that the insurgency in Nigeria's northeast has assumed reared its ugly head at the weekend. Some Boko Haram, Boko Haram fighters attempted to overrun Dalori, that's Bono State, but a spirited counter-offensive from Nigerian troops thwarted the attack. This is coming on the heels of the call by President Mohamed Buhari on African leaders to unite to defeat terror. Speaking at the ECOWAS summit in Uguagadugu, that Burkina Faso, President Buhari said, now is the time to stamp out terrorism because they cannot afford to let terror groups destabilize the region. Babajide, this is very instructive. Tell us about Dalori. What happened? Yeah, the Dalori has always been targeted by Boko. Why? For many reasons. One, it is very close to the Sambisa forest. You know, when you, and it's close to the university of Okay, Nigeria. okay, okay. Yes, the university is just on the other side. Now, if you live from the back of the university, if you walk like three kilometers, you are in the heart of Boko Haram territory. Really? Nobody goes there because it is not safe. Through that forest, you can walk right up to, it can lead you to Kalabalge which is one of the local governments in Borno State. So because it's close to uh, Boko Haram's um, uh, fortress, that is Ambisa Forest, any time they are hungry and they need to steal food, they will go to the IDP camp in Dalori. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they will come just after um, the camp had received delivery of uh, food items mm -hmm. for the IDPs. They will, they will open fire and still cut away food items. So that area has never been safe. You know, once you move out of uh, uh, Maiduguri, like five kilometers outside Maiduguri, nowhere is safe. You could be killed. Five kilometers yes. outside Maiduguri. The Shewa Borno said that to the president. So it's not just Jide saying it. It is what I know. Because the day that I traveled to, uh, to Konduga unassisted, the soldiers almost arrested me. They said, why? Did you tell the commander that you are coming? Hmm. And I was, I was accompanied uh, by the, 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 uh, the correspondent. No escort. Dala? Dala, yes, we were just going to uh, look for information. Hmm. No escort. They say, who does that? Why should you get on this road without uh, telling the commander that you are coming? We had to beg. Otherwise, I would have been uh, detained. So that area right up to Bama <coughs> is not safe. It is Boko Haram territory. And remember that uh, some time ago, they came into the university campus. Mm, yes. 
because the university land is extensive, yet it, there is no wall around the university. Mm. The former governor tried to build a wall, but invariably they settled for uh, tr uh, trenches around the university. Now with raining season, with the rainy season in full swing, the what they dug, what they excavated, mm. has been largely filled up. So they capitalized on it to try to enter uh, the university. The first rocket propelled uh, grenade shell landed near the wall of the university, which means they wanted a kind of like a three-pronged attack. Attack the IDP camp, attack the uh, attack the university. university community, and then uh, residents of uh, uh, communities around that place. But we thank God that our soldiers uh, uh, rose, rose to the occasion and uh, they couldn't uh, do much. And it is the Shekau uh, faction of Boko Haram that dominates that area, that is That's in control of that area. Not the uh, deadly ISWAP? No, no, no. Those ones, they I are very active in Borno North and um, parts of Borno Central. Wale, well, looking at this, President um, Buhari calling for a kind of um, collaboration because this is not a Nigerian thing alone. Mm. They have their f better share in charge. They have uh, in the J2, they felt the impact of the, um, uh, the, the activities of Boko Haram. So I think with the Francophone countries and the Anglophone countries, now is the time to come together to try and work out a synergy. Yes, um, first of all, we must realize that Boko Haram or Iswap, uh, the factions, they, are, they operate internationally. They have, you know, cross-national activities, which is not restricted to Nigeria alone. They are very active in Northern Cameroon. They are very active in the Chad Basin and uh, Mali. So it is correct to realize that this is not a, even though Nigeria seems to feel the heat more than most of these countries, but it's not a Nigerian problem. If we allow them to have stronghold in Nigeria, uh, the whole of the sub-region will be in trouble. There are about 360 million people in West Africa. Out of this, about 70% of them are Nigerians. Hmm. So if Boko Haram can be established in Nigeria, it's the uh, automatic uh, route to destabilizing the entire West African sub-region. Hmm. And we have uh, 16 countries in West Africa, so it's going to be fatal if other countries in the West uh, African uh, sub-region refuses to realize that it's also their problem. But then, uh, charity begins at home. Mm. We must uh, transform our words into action. We can't be talking about global cooperation without also allowing those countries to come and uh, take active participation, you know, in the fight against uh, uh, Boko Haram. So it's not just about saying it. There, there, there must be a joint military operation that Nigeria may lead mm. that will confront this problem decisively. Mm. We should not delude ourselves <coughs> that because we are the biggest country in West Africa that we can solve the problem alone. Other countries have strategic roles to play, and we have to realize this and ensure that they're also part of the campaign. Majid, some um, Nigerians are even applauding the recent closure of some borders. And if you uh, listen to the Controller General of uh, Nigerian Custom, it was affirming it that some areas in the north that they bring in ammunition through our porous borders there. Now, with this effort by the federal government to try and, you know, um, restrict movements around the border, do you think this will in any way help? Yes, I, I think it's a, it's a welcome development. And, uh, you know, um, the president in uh, uh, Burkina Faso <coughs> actually uh, was worried, I mean, in the statement he made, that he's concerned about the rate of terrorism and the, the, the kind of equipment available to these uh, insurgents. And they wondered where they were getting uh, that money from. And that's, that uh, part of the intelligence reports, I mean, led to the closure of uh, some of our land borders. I mean, and I think uh, it's yielding results, not for uh, smugglers alone, but for those bringing in ammunition. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that's really working out. And to talk on uh, the efforts of uh, the uh, West African sub region and the Lake Chad Basin on tackling uh, Boko Haram. The uh, president of uh, uh, Burkina Faso, uh, Muhammadu Isofu, actually uh, said 
the, the, the region is trying to set up a $1 billion fund uh, between 2020 and 2024 to tackle this issue of um, uh, Boko Haram and uh, insurgency because it has become a very, very serious problem, it especially is. from what uh, uh, Wally said. <laughs> Nigeria remains a focal point, especially because of our uh, size, about 200 million people out of the 360 million in, in, the, in the West African sub-region. So, and I see Nigeria as more of a fertile ground. This, Nigeria is where they abduct our uh, uh, girls, our students, and demand for ransom. When you pay them this ransom, they use it to the foil. And like Gideon also rightly said, I mean, when they are hungry and when they need to um, uh, uh, recoup and uh, uh, do some other things, they, they go straight uh, uh, to, to, to the army barracks and, uh, and, and launch attacks or go to villages or uh, even the university. Mm. I mean, recall just last week, they attacked the, the, the convoy of the governor. I mean, uh, we're, we're on his way from uh, uh, Kondu, uh, between Konduga and, uh, and Bama. So it's, it's really a very, very serious threat. And I think there should be a joint effort, I mean, continued joint effort, because we have the uh, a multinational tax force uh, comprising of uh, uh, teams from uh, some other uh, neighboring countries. But it's like Nigeria is the one uh, playing the major role because we feel this heat more because they see Nigeria as a fertile ground. On the final note, Virginia, on this, in terms of manpower, I think we need to get more people on ground. Mm -hmm. And I know that the training is not just a day. As in, in terms of counter-terrorism, in terms of boosting the strength of our military. Right now, they are stretched, they are involved in operations across like um, 30 states. So we need to get more men because the more you kill this Boko Haram, I don't know their recruit, the, the way they recruit, their recruitment drive. Mm -hmm. I saw one match that the people in the front, they were wearing uniform, only a certain uniform, mm -hmm. and people behind. And if you look at the numerical strength, they were marching. And mm -hmm. if that video is anything to go by, man. <laughs> right. Military strategists say to defeat an insurgency, you must outnumber the enemy by a ratio of five to one. We don't have the troops to do that. We really don't have enough troops to do that. So we have to put more troops in the Northeast. That was what the governor of Bono demanded. As, you, as I talked about last week, we are not even defending our communities. Remember what happened in Gubbio. The, because they know that Gubbio is undefended, literally undefended, with just few soldiers there. They went back there, they killed the soldiers, killed the uh, civilian JTF men, including the leader of the civilian JTF in that town, Malam, Malam, Abu, uh, Malam Buka. Malam Buka is seen as a hero because he had fought and defended his town for, for years. But we lost him in that uh, operation. And um, definitely we have to do much better. Our people are not living in their houses anymore. Yeah. I said that the Monguno, between Monguno and Baga is 78 kilometers. Out of these, nine villages are unoccupied by anyone. Yeah. Okay, I have a friend of the house, a journalist, um, Alaji Sule, Yao Sule from Kano State on the line. Thank you, Sule. Yes, uh, are you? Well thank, done. thank you for joining us. You see, we have this uh, attitude in Nigeria of only celebrating our own when someone is dead. But I think, I think we, need, we need to go beyond that. I am so thrilled and, and, and very happy with the award received by TVC, Babajide and Co. Uh, honestly, you people have bring a new chapter in the broadcast journalism in Nigeria. And I am more thrilled because Babajide's background uh, used to be print media. In, in our days, in the 90s, when, you, when we were reporters, I know Babajide has, has always been with the print media. Suddenly he came and, and bring a new face in the broadcast media. This honestly deserves to be celebrated. A big con congratulations to Babajide, and Mr. Ayo, and all the crew members. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our friend Sule Yao Sule from mm. um, Kano State. And thanks for the kiddish the other day. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs>
All right, gentlemen, I think it's an ongoing thing. I was I, trying to, okay. I'm sorry, the, yes. because you know I was in my degree, and I don't like to say things that I can't prove. I'm saying that between Mongunu and Baga, there used to be nine communities. Those nine communities, as we speak, nobody's living in them. They all fled to the IDP camp in the garrison town of Mongunu, and I'm going to list those villages. Yoyo, Mais 90, Kekeno, Barwati, Dogashi, Bondor, Koskawa, Geringewa, and Miles 4. Nine communities on that stretch of 78 kilometers. There is no one of those communities where you will find anybody anymore because that area is not safe. The people have fled to areas that are safe. So we've literally left a huge expanse of land for this. Uh, aberrant people to be roaming free and harass anyone who tries to uh, to come in contact with them. So this is the situation. It's the same problem along, from, even from Maiduguri to to um, to Monguno. A lot of those communities, people have fled. That is what our people are facing. All right, so still to come, President Ramaphosa booed at Mugabe's funeral over xenophobic attacks sent envoy to seven African countries as former external affairs minister urges Nigeria to sue South Africa at ICJ. We'll be right back after this timeout. Please stay with us. Welcome back. It's your multiple award-winning program, Journalist Hangout, reaching you live from Television Continental here in our headquarters in Lagos, Nigeria. No man, the sea, is an island unto himself. Man, South African people are certainly not having the last laugh over the incessant xenophobic attacks, the visit on other African nationals. At the funeral of former president of Zimbabwe, Robert Mugabe, in Harare, the crowd gave President Siri Ramaphosa, a hostile reception. He was booed as he was giving a speech at the funeral. Back home, President Ramaphosa commenced fence mending efforts by sending envoys to seven African leaders, including Nigeria's president, to deliver a message of solidarity. He officially apologized to Nigeria on behalf of his country. When the two of his envoys had audience with President Buhari in Abuja earlier today. Meanwhile, former Minister of External Affairs, Professor Bolaji Akiemi, is urging Nigeria to sue the Rainbow Nation at the International Court of Justice, ICJ. Wale, Professor <coughs> Akiemi, a very, very, uh, very, how would I call him? <laughs> Diplomat. Yeah. The, it was a, under the government of um, President Papangira, um, yes, mm -hmm. the former the external affairs minister, minister and everything. He has been there mm -hmm. like a, a veteran. Mm -hmm. And he understands international politics mm -hmm. and is asking Nigeria because Nigeria was talking about compensation to the government of South Africa. Yeah. But the government of South Africa has been saying that no, they can't just um, pay anything. Now, Bolaji Akiemi is saying that, let's go to ICJ, and we might claim damages and compensation. Well, um, first of all, I watched the SA president when he was in um, Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe, and um, he was booed. He also apologized to fellow African brothers. It uh, was so painful to many people from Zimbabwe because in the 80s, the 70s, Zimbabwe was one of the frontline states mm. that gave succor to a lot of South Africans that were fleeing from apartheid. Mm. In fact, Mugabe had to de defend his land reforms, which should have taken place around 1983 because of South Africa. He didn't want to take the, whites back, the land back from the whites. If he had done that, it would have sent wrong signal to the apartheid regime. It would have delayed the dependent that came in 1994. So I think those problems are there. His apology, I think, is coming too late. But then, go, talking about going to, well, there are international conventions against racial discrimination, of which Nigeria and South Africa are signatories. International convention against discrimination against migrant workers. Mm. You know, these are international conventions that, I mean, we are all signatories, and I think it is right 
that we can go to International Court of Justice to, to I mean, to, to seek justice. Yes. In a way, it's going to give hope to those South Africans, Nigerians who are living in South Africa, who are helpless, as we speak now. Many of them want to come back home, but coming home to do what? Mm. Some have lived over 15 years. Some are married there. Mm. Their children are in schools. Mm. Their children are being bullied by South African uh, you know, so, schoolmates. Mm -hmm. They are being harassed. Some have investments there. Mm. They have shops. They are, they are, some are into insurance. And so how will you just ask them to come back home? Yes. How, where are they going to start? So I think going to the International Court of Justice is a moral victory. It's a good thing, at least to give hope to uh, Nigerians that are living in South Africa. But beyond that, we also need to realize that we need to start thinking about the need for us to build our home. We need to dissuade Nigerians from fleeing this, uh, this country. And the only way you can dissuade them is to create the conditions that will make them see Nigeria as their home. Light, mm. security, good water, mm -hmm. good governance, lack of corruption is embarrassing that South Africa that was ruled by white people, that we fought and collaborated, that we are now rushing to South Africa to go and look for means of livelihood. It's, mm. it's, it's not good. Andrew, we got independence in 1960, and 2019 we are still going to beg South Africa. So, Andrew, even some of our um, viewers that they watch us from um, Cape Town, Johannesburg, they've been calling to appreciate the follow-ups we've been doing on this xenophobic attack, but ultimately, Telling them to come back home, that might not be the permanent solution to what is on ground, mm. but they are better alive <laughs> if they know that. They, but some Nigerians, they have heavy investment. They've invested heavily yes. in South Africa. Yeah, it's, it's, it's such an um, unfortunate um, uh, development. And I think uh, the South African government should go beyond um, the, apology. the apology that uh, they are the sending. Special the, 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 the special envoy is taking to Nigeria and six other countries. I mean, by ensuring that they do a sort of reorientation for their citizenry. Because I recall a South African lady uh, did, did, a, did a video of um, uh, where he was advising his people that mm -hmm. if you go to most Afri South African hospitals, yes. uh, when they get drunk and they, I mean, they need, um, uh, medical. Med medical help. It is Nigerian doctors, they'll find that. What you're watching is what transpired earlier today. The envoys from South Africa with the president of Nigeria and the um, Minister of External Affairs. I've seen the um, Minister of Ex External Affairs. I've seen the Internal Affairs Minister, that's um, Ogbeni Rauf Arebo Shola, and um, the cham uh, chairman of Nigeria um, Com yeah, Diaspora Com Com Commission, mm -hmm. that's um, Honorable Abike Dabiri Erewa meeting with uh, the delegates from South Africa. Yes, as well as uh, the, um, the leader of the delegation, uh, Bobby, Bobby Morrow, that's uh, the uh, South African ambassador to Nigeria, uh, he led uh, the uh, team, uh, the envoy uh, that came from South Africa. So like, like we were saying, beyond this visit and this uh, talk to, <coughs> then we should also think of compensation to those Nigerians who are doing genuine yes. uh, businesses mm -hmm. there that they've had their businesses mm -hmm. uh, vandalized. I mean, yes. you see a lot destroyed. of uh, destroyed. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of uh, destruction uh, uh, really uh, went on. I mean, in the past two years, but the, the last, the latest ones were about uh, 12 people died. Fortunately, no Nigerian was involved. But unfortunately, I mean, no, 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 no a xenophobic attack is worth the life of a single person. 12 people died. Two, two and ten of them South Africans, two from uh, probably uh, uh, Tanzania and uh, one other African country. So uh, they should do a sort of reorientation that blacks, we are all uh, brothers and sisters. I mean, we don't need to chase people away just because uh, some, of, some of their guys are lazy. They feel Nigerians and these uh, the people from Tanzania and uh, Zimbabwe and those mm -hmm. neighboring countries mm -hmm. are coming to snatch uh, the jobs that they are supposed to be doing. They don't even have the qualification for, some of the, uh, for, for most of these jobs. But Vajira, beyond this kind of visits, Nigerians are questioning the uh, sincerity on the part of the government of South Africa. Uh, um, people in their government, we've seen their um, police affairs minister speaking, we've seen some ministers from South Africa speaking, and we've even heard from ANC. There's no genuine commitments, apart from 
um, you know, people like Honorable Malema, that he has been very, very vocal against condemning what the people of South Africa has been, they've been doing against other African countries. Yes, I think even the, the body language of their leaders shows clearly that they abet the, the attacks going on. They have not, until now, they, they have not demonstrated a desire to put an end to this. How many attacks. arrests have you made? How many people have you prosecuted? They have, because, because, it, because a lot of those South African leaders believe that it is politically incorrect to openly condemn mm. xenophobic attacks. Mm. Their own thugs are emboldened. Yeah. Because when leaders who have stature, leaders who are influential, come out to say, look, what you are doing is wrong. You shouldn't be doing this. The people will not feel encouraged. How many South Africans have you punished for setting ablaze people's uh, business, business premises? There are Nigerians who had, there are Nigerians who had car mats. Mm. And then you yeah. set ablaze an entire car mat. You've destroyed their lives. Yeah. There are Nigerians who are married to South Africans. In fact, what one South African woman said is that the Nigerians know how to take care of uh, women. They don't even <laughs> care w uh, about the fact that some of us are from earlier marriages. Uh, some of us have been previously married. Mm. They will still w welcome, you. embrace us and take good care of us. That everything you need to do is like, I now, I, I, I'm not, I now see a clash of cultures. We, we give our women money to go and make okay. their air. The woman is saying that the average South African man I does not do care that. about that. Whether your hair is rumpy or not, that's not his uh, business. Mm. So the special care that we give to women mm. makes it extremely difficult for the African, South African man to compete against our own men for women. So these are the things paying them. Give us. You know, yes, you know, we are very generous people. Give, you, know, I, I, you see, you know, when my Igbo brothers mm. step into an arena, yes, the way they take care, because I live they with believe, them in Kano, they believe that the way they take care of the woman, you don't, you don't stand any chance. Yes. Honestly, yes. you don't stand any it's chance against religion. them. <laughs> they would extreme care of their women. <laughs> you too, you, you, serious envy will be in your eyes when you are looking at their women. <laughs> so this is the thing. The South Africans can't stand that. Mm. Look at the South African economy. It's losing more jobs than it's creating. Mm. Yeah. So there is tension in the land. More than two, in, within 10 years, we, they move from 2 million immigrants to 4 million mm. immigrants. Those jobs are not there. Mm. They now think that it is uh, the Nigerians, so the Tanzanians, the Mozambicans mm. that are coming to take those jobs. So, until the African uh, South African leaders show real commitment to defeat this uh, xenophobia attacks and put xeno xenophobes in jail, mm. this thing will not stop. I believe that we should pursue the angle of uh, of, of this compensation. Even yes. even Obasanjo has said that in the letter that I just wrote to Mongosutu Butelezi, that we must start from even the AU. Complain to the AU that this is what these people have done to us. Then seek redress. From the AU, we can go on to ICJ. I agree absolutely with uh, uh, Bola Jaki Yemi. Because South Africa must be made to pay. If you have a government that cannot rein in criminals who are roaming free on the streets and beating people up, destroying people's uh, business premises, then you are, not, you are not a serious country. They're not even most. Some of them are not even educated to read, to have read what they happened. They don't have the skills. During mm -hmm. the appetite, like like like, like Jide said, they are emboldened by the kind of statements some of their leaders mm -hmm. uh, are making. Look at the uh, deputy commissioner of, of uh, uh, police, mm -hmm. no, the, the deputy police chief. He said, "Can you imagine?" Uh, uh, people, people who are not South Africans take, mm. take, uh, take over our land and mm. living in choice areas like people complaining now that some people are living in Banada. You both are living in Banada. Mm. Are they living there for free? <laughs> they got the money. Are they not paying for it? This mm. thing that you said, you know, I, can you I, uh, I was in, uh, in Durban in 2012. Somebody said the same thing to me that there was an area, they carved out an area for a new estate. Yeah. 
that the first set of people <laughs> that will buy the estate are Nigerians. <laughs> so these kind of things generate. We love, we love good things, but then it's, they work, we, work for, we work for our money. Most surprising is the statement from Mbeki. If you watch it on two, he was in Nigeria for 10 years. Yes. Protected by the Nigerian government uh, and by the Nigerian funded. people. Mm. But he was, you know, almost but taking the same mob mentality with. Mm. You know, That's so, the thing. So mm. They see that as political correctness. Mm. So, it's many, a shame. so many South African students went to Ife and yeah. Yeah. Where are you? Where are you? For free. Where are you? Mm -hmm. for Free. All, right. All right. On the bill of the Nigerian government. Okay, moving on now. There was fire on the mountain in Ekiti State last week when students of the Federal University of Yekiti clashed with policemen during a protest. Two students died in the confrontation from bullets fired by policemen during the fracas. The state governor, Kai Defiami, wants answers. He, want, he urged the commissioner of police in that state, that's Asukwamba, to fish out the killer policemen involved in the unfortunate incident. And coincidentally, I have you guys, three journalists. Did so join them? All from all Ekiti. Kitty. Yeah, all from, all from Ekiti now. Kitty. Yeah, all from <laughs> so you yeah, can all also, uh, Mujid, what happened? What happened? I saw um, um, the pictures of um, students coming out. The convoy of the wife of the uh, governor was attacked and everything. But the backlash is that at the end of the day, Student of Federal University of um, Federal University of Yekiti actually lost their life too, and that's so unfortunate. I must first say that uh, I commiserate with the uh, families of um, uh, uh, those two students. It's an unfortunate incident. No protest is worth the life of a single soul. It was an unfortunate uh, incident. But then we all we all went to school too. We were involved in so many protests, and you know. This protest, you only know how it will start, but how it will end, mm. you never can imagine. I was in Ikiti that day. Uh, the students were protesting against epileptic power, power supply. supply. And I think we should understand, we should educate ourselves that if we are protesting, I mean, even your school authority cannot Provide, provide you a power supply. A power supply. Not even the state government. It is a general problem. And we have, and Fuoye is not owned by the state government. But then students do have a democratic right to protest. At times, we make jokes that if we are afraid of writing exams, we look an, for an opportunity for the school to be shut down or for lectures for the, to be postponed. So we look for one protest or the other, I mean, in our school days. But this particular one, um, it was so unfortunate. Well, I also blame the, the police to some extent because from the uh, audio tape of the student union government president, he said the protests um, had ended by 1.30 and that he was even discussing with the chief security officer uh, to the governor and um, um, the military men who came to protect them until they heard that some of their students at the other campus in Ecole were being attacked and uh, that infuriated some of the students and he was even trying to calm them down when a policeman slapped him, the SUG president. But he said, in fairness to the CSO and the military man, they apologized to him. He was trying to manage the situation, then he started hearing gunshots and everything went awire. So they, I mean, it had nothing to do with the convoy of uh, the um, wife of the governor. Nobody ordered the shooting of it was a protest that was hijacked and turned to a mob action. The, the, pro, the, uh, the, the um, program that was going on was in a hall, but I think probably some of the students or the hoodlums, they, you know, naturally students who want a government official to talk to them when these kind of things happen. The first lady, uh, the Lubis Fahimi, was inside the hall distributing some empowerment <coughs> uh, uh, yes. materials to um, <coughs> women and stuff. So she was not even aware that okay. something it, like that was going on. It, I want you to take it from here. At least I know that John Kai Refai is an activist on his own. Yeah. He rules. <laughs> his life has always been about Aluta, even the wife. Yeah. Now, why would police deploy to use life ammunition against students that are protesting against um, a power outage. It's very unfortunate, no matter what. 
we must defend the sanctity of human life. Those two students, Dada Kende and Konufa Joseph, um, they have put their families into grief, to great pain. So my heart goes to them. I sympathize with them. Um, I think we should avoid politicizing the issue because I see that tendency, you know, by some politi politicians trying to feast on this uh, crisis. I think the police should learn to manage uh, protests, even if it means firing um, rubber bullets. But the situation where with the slightest or tear gas, the slightest tear provocation, um, the next thing you do is to shoot live bullets. That's just quite unfortunate. The school is a federal government school. Police, we don't have state police. They're under the control of the federal government. Even though the governors are just uh, chief security officer only in paper. And I think the first lead out went to Oye. There are two, there are two different, they are not connected at all with the protest. So the link with the protest was because the police came in into that scene. There are two incidents, I mean, the protest against electricity, and then the first lady was distributing uh, goodies to some poor women. There are two different things. But the police came in on that scene and messed up the whole thing. Because if you look at the career of the first lady, she was at the University of Ife and part of the student movement. And if you read her statement, you, you will see that she was feeling the pain. And the first thing she did was to suspend you know, the, yeah, the, program. the program. And also the, the barrier, the state government sent representatives there to sympathize you know, with those students that were killed. Police of the now has not done that. So I'm happy that the governor is saying that we should fish out those who killed you know, those students. Because in the past few months, people have been killed extrajudicially. And I'm happy the IG has been giving directives that bring out these killer policemen. One just stop about eight people, drunk, you know, drunk policemen in Akure. Okay. So this thing must stop. So do we are waiting for we, the policemen that carry out this, I, this thing. And, you know, do they actually they to send a video just earlier just to um, um, uh, the producer and I saw a policeman was lynched and they, I think that's the first person that was, was linked and the way the student descended on the, the policeman. And the governor now saying that, look, the, sh the police commissioner sh must produce the culprits, those people that actually uh, fired the shots, that killed these two students. What do you make of this situation? No, first, let me deny um, <coughs> authorship of a particular statement purporting to condemn uh, Mrs. Fayemi. It shows how mischievous Nigerians can be. Some people wrote something negative about her and put my name. And they are sharing it on social media that Baba Jide said, look, your own is too much, uh, Relu uh, fire me. We had not discussed this matter. At all. And I had not sure? posted anywhere, either on social media or anywhere, I had not posted my comment on the matter. I regret that we lost those boys. I was on the road. When we got to Oye, we had to go and pass through the bush. Like it's enough. Yes, one, one mm -hmm. literally abandoned road. We had to use uh, Daoni. Da, uh, da Daoni. Da 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 <coughs> that the and that's the old road. And we yeah. came mm -hmm. out at Oboile, mm -hmm. in Kwara State. Mm -hmm. Terrible and treacherous road mm -hmm. because we didn't want to be caught up in the uh, crossfire. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, the governor, I, I, I like the governor for one thing. He's a man with an eye for the spoken word. He said it diminishes our democracy mm. when people involved in legitimate Protest. protests mm. get fired at. Yeah. So the, the statement is clear that it, do, it does not like what in has happened. In any way condoned. Yes. Mm. Now, where the governor said oh, that the, the, those connected with the shooting or with the incident within the force and outside of the force should be brought to book. My fear is that that investigation by the police could be one-sided. Mm. They will go, in fact, they had been raiding, they had raided the school for some culprits. Mm. Whereas within them, some policemen showed aberrant behavior by firing directly, mm. using leather weapons mm. to quell a protest. So mm. I, I know that in the end, they may not want to produce the, the, those uh, killers, the, the killer policemen, but I won't be surprised if they go to make a, a harvest of arrests mm. of students. This is not what we want to see. 
the investigation should not be one-sided. And it should be easy for the police to identify those who fired those shots at the, at the, uh, at the at those students. We must find a way of managing protests without using leather weapons. It, it shows how barbaric we are that our police Against would students directly or... shoot at people. Yeah. Not... We do it, we directly fire at Shiite people. In a uh, white men or what are they called in, uh, in Kaduna? Now even students, we directly fire at them. It makes no sense. Young people are naturally exuberant. Mm. Mm. And we have to be able to understand and manage them properly, not open fire on people. Over what now? Second because second they were protesting mm. and they don't have light. How do they pass their exams if they can't read in the mm. night? So this thing to just police, we, we need to do something. The IG came to Lagos after those uh, extrajudicial killings and said, we are going to do something. Get uh, these uh, tasers mm. to use it to immobilize uh, protesters and other people so that you can make arrests calmly without taking the life of the person. One of them was but I don't know what the IG is doing yeah. about that now. The, uh, the parents would have invested so, so if much the IG, to get them. My point is, if the IG mm. made that promise that mm. that is the, uh, uh, the to way be. to go, what is stopping him from telling his people that they on no account should they use uh, leather weapons to quell protests? Should it, have we now imported those uh, tasers hmm. by which yes. we can uh, immobilize uh, dangerous people and arrest them instead of simply taking their lives? Even the Shiite people, we have no right to kill people in the way we are doing. Hmm. It shows how barbaric we are. And the police must know. After all, when soldiers killed them the other day, we all protested. Hmm. We said it was wrong. So and they we, can't be doing that. And we are yet to see the reports. Mm. From defense headquarters mm. two weeks after, no, they must bring Taraba states. We won't leave them alone. They must Taraba bring state it. Re ah. reports, police re reports. Oh, if they like, they can <laughs> doctor the report, mm. but mm. they must release it. We they must release that report. We have waited it's over two weeks now. Uh -huh. So, so whatever they want to do, now. we are watching mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. But the um, so at what point in time I want to know the was it were they trying to attack the, uh, the convoy or the vehicle to the wife of the governor? You know, after the student union president was slapped, mm. that was when they now, want, some of them wanted to retaliate because the SUG president, I mean, it's like their own. Yes, their own that's, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that was the point. Uh, then they went into that um, hall where the event was uh, holding and started destroying the yes. vehicles that were parked there in mm. retaliation uh, to the slapping of uh, the yeah, uh, president. SUG president. And also, they manhandled a policeman to the extent that I learned they seized uh, the rifle of that police uh, uh, oh. man, although mm. the rifle was later uh, mm. recovered. Oh. So, mm. in the... Right, I thought that policeman would die. Honestly, the they, yeah, yeah, the way they... So, I, I think our students, our students should be survived. careful. Mm. They should... Uh, put some uh, method into the quote unquote, madness that uh, we see during protests. So, uh, so that uh, we won't The problem about um, uh, this kind of protest is that it takes one person to start to take one bad step. Bad, bad step. So that once it takes it, other will see how it affects. So it becomes a mob action. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Ewai. You've we'll been part of uh, today's program. And um, Walia Dewi, thank you so much. Thank you very much. You're all still from Ikiti Axis and from the southern part of, of Ikiti. <laughs> Omo Ikiti. <laughs> yes, the south, Savi. Omo Ikiti. No, no, no. Daya Dewi. Daya Dewi. Now, Biodo Oluji me as one. Once my senator, you have probably always your senator. Always your senator. All right, DKO, thank you and congratulations for the award. Thank you so much. And that's our offering today. Join us tomorrow for another episode of the program and also what journalists hang out on our platforms showing on the screen. We're on YouTube, youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. Our feedback channel is Journalist Hangout at tvcnews.tv. I'm Ayodele Uzubakun. Bye for now. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless Nigeria.